All right, been doing a terrible job updating uh, this week, but got all these uh, doors that you saw last week. Uh, they're getting ready for paint. So yeah, I'm gonna paint these real quick, and it's a nice day today. So it's in the 60s, got the garage door open, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna paint away. Alright, so I just got uh, the last coat of paint on these guys. I might need to do one little more coat. Um, still got a little paint in the gun, but... Um, yeah, I don't think that the uh, little water mixture, glue and water mixture I put around the edges really did anything. Um, didn't seem to help it uh, not soak up as much paint. It still seems like it's taking an extra coat on top of everything else to get the, uh, the edges plugged. So yeah, don't waste your time doing that. Um, maybe do wood filler in the future. I don't know if you're really worried about it, but I guess if you're doing a lot of MDF work, a lot of cabinet doors and stuff like this, you should probably think about maybe optimizing your painting strategy. So maybe I'll try wood filler in the future, who knows. But uh, let me know in the comments if you guys have any tips on sealing the edges of MDF, because I tried like a one to three or one to one glue to water ratio to try to seal up the edges and that really just didn't seem to do anything. So uh, let me know if your experience is any different or if I did something wrong. But, uh, yeah, nice little sprayer. I forgot to put in the big tip on the first coat of paint on the backs, but that's why I started on the backs, is because that's what not anybody is gonna see. And I put in the right tip, and all of a sudden it started feeding a lot better. And then I also forgot to strain the paint. The paint's kind of old and kind of crusty and um, really needed to be strained before it got put in the, uh, in the gun itself. So I started using a little strainer we picked up at the kitchen store. Now all I gotta do is sit and watch some paint dry have we here? Check that out. Nice. How does it look? Looks like a crappy trucker hat. I love it. Yeah, so uh, we got these, super excited. Um, staying in the light so you can see me, yeah. Check that out. Sweet, you, uh, you get one of these for free when you join the stud stack. So uh, even if it's only for one month, you still get a free hat. So if nothing else, sign up for the free hat, links in the description. But check that out, isn't that cool? All right, hey. Am I even in focus? Is this focus? Hey, what's up? So, uh, yeah, we got new hats. If you want one, uh, check the link in the description and learn how to get one. Uh, but yeah, so been MIA for about a week or so. Um, Jen and I interviewed for a couple new jobs. We're still waiting to hear back, but uh, trying to get to someplace a little bit warmer. Uh, but yeah. To pick up right where we left off, I've got to build that pool table cover, and then I've got to build uh, a little hallway desk for his girlfriend, and then a couple other little small things. So, um, yeah, let's get to it. It's, uh, it's 13 degrees outside right now. Not happy about that. I'm wasting so much time. I don't care about the money, like buying propane or whatever. I, I have to heat the shop for an hour before I can even come out here, and I'm like freezing cold right now because I had to turn it off because the camera's going. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just... It's really hurting my time productivity once it starts to get cold. I can't batch out so many projects like I can in the summer and in the spring and the fall. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at. But hey, got to deal with what we got. So uh, nobody else is. Everybody else has the same problems up here. So um, if I can still make furniture, I don't care.
So I guess the business tip for this week is log your hours. Pull out your phone, get a stopwatch, do whatever you need to do, but start logging the amount of time you actually spend on every project. Um, this isn't so you can like gouge the customer at the end for more money. This is really just for you to see, hey, how did I do? Because you gotta be evaluating yourself, right? You can't just make sales, make furniture, give it to the customer and say, well, I'll try again next time. Like you actually need to be putting numbers on it and tracking the number and actually tracking how well you're doing as far as managing your time and oh I overestimated that job I underestimated that job just really get a, a good get a really good feel for how much time you're actually spending on a project versus what you're telling the customer you're spending on again you don't have to like completely change your pricing structure or anything like that this is just more for you that way you can better budget and better pitch projects in the future because right now my problem is not making enough money I'm you know my pipeline is is relatively full right now my problem is okay now I've got delivery dates can I make sure that I hold up my end of the deal on a delivery date when I'm taking in a bunch of projects and this is gonna be you in the future right like you're working in your garage right now but if you ever want to hire an employee or you want to hire multiple employees you got to know how fast they work and you got to be able to accurately predict how quick you can batch some furniture out um, because ultimately like your reputation for being able to deliver on time is really going to set you apart from other furniture makers in the area, especially if you can do it faster. And that's one of your unique points about you is that you can build quality furniture much, much faster. Imagine like, imagine telling somebody that you can build and deliver a piece of furniture that's built three times better than what's at Ashley, where Ashley, it takes them six weeks to get it from the truck up to their house and delivered and, and then you got to put it together. It's just a nightmare. And the fact of the matter is most people spend too much time on a project. Uh, if you don't know about the 80-20 rule, it, no, don't kill me on the numbers on this, but it's basically you spend 80% of your time on that last 20% of the project and sometimes that's worth it if your client is paying you several thousand dollars okay they're paying for the full hundred percent but if they're only paying you three four hundred dollars for a coffee table then you know um, it doesn't need to be the most well-crafted thing you've ever made because you're just gonna start losing money so get it to the point where you know that hey the, no joke this is a solid piece of furniture it's gonna last forever and it looks great you don't need to you know experiment with too many super fancy joinery methods or you don't need to you know you don't need to do actual mortise and tenon joinery if you've got something like a festool domino because guess what it's just as strong and the customer is never gonna know not even care I feel like we as woodworkers put a lot of our pride into a piece of work as we should like it takes a lot of our time but some people think that if they produce something that's less than 100% that they're just a terrible person and that they don't deserve to be a woodworker and blah 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 blah. When in reality all you got to do is understand what your customer is paying for. If your customer is paying for top of the line the best thing that you know uh, you've ever built then they better be paying for it right? Like. You should be charging anywhere from $25 to $50 an hour when you first start out. First start out, not when you're good, not when you've been doing this for a few years. When you're first starting out doing DIY furniture that you're selling to your buddy, you should be charging at least $25 an hour. Um, but that should go into your bid and everything. But again, that's just stuff we'll hit in repetition. You gotta, you gotta do this stuff multiple times. You can't, you know, you're gonna lose some money. You're gonna, you're gonna build a project. You're gonna lose some money. Say, oh, I lost time. I lost money. I lost some material that, you know, was really nice. You know, don't, don't let the the fear of screwing up keep you from learning because that's how you learn. If you don't ever screw up, you're never gonna learn. So, get out there, find somebody that wants something, sell it to them. And don't worry about it being 100%. Just let it go and you'll be surprised to find out that your furniture is still way better than anything they could buy at the store and they're super happy and you're making money and your wife's happy because you bought her a brand new car with all your woodworking money.